session number three, The Prosperous Divas Living Wealthy, The Basics of Love, Romance, and Partnership. And tonight's session is number three, and we're going to look at superstitions, the killers of love, romance, and partnership revealed. But before we start, we do have a spoken word piece from Chris Crawford. Let's check her out. Just started a dietary plan, and every day I contemplate how I can satisfy my hunger. I'm seeking more than just a snack. I need more than an appetizer. I don't even think that a three-course meal at a five-star restaurant will do. Don't think they make courses big enough for my type of hunger. Don't think I'll ever get full, because if I ever get full, that means that I'm not breathing. That means that I'm sedated. That means that I'm unconscious. Because I can ever see myself being so full that I don't want to keep going closer and closer to God. I can never hear myself saying I've had enough of his love and I could never get enough of his forgiveness. And there is no possible way that I would ever stop being hungry for his food, hungry for his vision, his purpose, and his plan. I can never be too of his mercy or too full of his presence in my life. And how crazy would I be if I said, no, God, I just can't have any more peace in my life right now. I just don't have enough room for it. I want to overeat when it comes to God. But it really wouldn't be overeat because I'll never get full. I can't get full. My metabolism too high. I have a tapeworm. I need to have meal after meal after meal. I want to digest his will, I want to savor his favor, I crave his direction, I desire his affection, I delight in his protection, I say grace over our connection, and I'm starving for his satisfaction, and just to make sure that my words line up with my action, I'm giving up my satisfaction like a vegetarian gives up meat, and no longer being content with the content that I used to habitually eat. I don't care for Twitter, but my dietary plan is something I would tweet. Tweet because I'm so excited that being hungry is what I'm doing right now, and my hunger is getting me closer to making it possible for God and I to meet. Because at the end of my dietary plan, the goal is to be invited to kneel at God's feet. Again, welcome to session number three. I am Ronnie B. I'm here with the Prosperous Divas. Tonight's workshop, we're focusing on three areas. Superstitions, the killers of love, romance, and partnership revealed. Partnership, keys to success, and the Divine Mind Prosperity Blaster. And let me turn it over to your course leaders, Diva Nikki. Over to you. Hey, hey, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for session number three of Living Wealthy, The Basics, Love, Romance, and Partnership. I am Nikki, and tonight I'm joined by Robin and Nakia for your course leaders for this six-part series. If this is your first time participating in a prosperous Beagle webinar or workshop. We welcome you and promise you will get value. If you missed any of the previous sessions, visit our website at prosperousdivas.com. Now, here we are, living wealthy. The basics of love, romance, and partnership is specifically designed for each participant to have a measurable and quantifiable breakthrough in their personal wealth from inquiry into these basics. The distinction of love, romance, and partnership form our core experience of relationships, which is at the heart or center of power 
and manifesting our deepest and most important desires. Before we start our inquiry, let me check in with the team and see what has opened up for them since the first session. So, Robin, is there anything you'd like to share? Let's see. Um, I have noticed that my expectations of my husband have relaxed in the mm. sense that he can be I'm letting him be more himself. Today we yeah. had a discussion about money. There's um, some expenditures we want to do um, on our house. And then I've just had a bunch of dental work done. And um, he gets really um, anxious when it comes to, to, to those things. And, and he goes into this same thing that he always says, which is, I knew that this house was too expensive for us when we bought it. And, you know, and <laughs> we've been living here nine years and, um, and just this whole thing, that's what comes up for him. And in the past, I would always kind of argue with him about it. Like, yeah, but this, and yeah, but that, and this time I just, I just heard him out. And um, at the end I said, you know, that we'll be fine. Right. And he said, yeah. And he thanked me for just listening. Wow. That's so love huge. love was not disrupted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh. <laughs> that is sweet. That's that's strong. That is mm. very strong. Ronnie, what about yourself? Okay. Yeah, you know, I I just wanted to just something I got present to in the conversation Robin just shared was how uh you know, in the course we say that uh, that you're going to have a, a measurable and quantifiable breakthrough in your personal wealth. Now, you, you know, mm -hmm. like, like, and I, I don't think we've said anything about money. Right. Uh, you know, we, I, I, not really, you know, but uh, I can get that if you have the freedom to have uh, conversations with, you know, the most important person, uh, you know, in your life about a money issue, and there's love and freedom there, it's going to make the whole journey that much easier. Mm -hmm. Yep, you know, that much easier. You, you might be able to get to making some money, or, you know, because <laughs> you don't have that baggage of, the, uh, of that in there. Um, yeah. Uh, one, yeah. Now, uh, one of the things that open, I, I just see something that's been really opening up for me is that um, uh, the uh, the, the degree I experience uh, romance with myself, and uh, I really love the exercise we did where we, uh, you know, created our ideal romantic fantasy person. And, you know, one of the things is that uh, I, I saw that I, I love uh, doing romantic things for the nature, for the, for the experience of the romantic nature. It's not necessarily for that other, like for, it's not romance for someone or to get someone or to go somewhere or to have something or to manipulate. Uh, it, it's, it, it's actually uh, a, a pleasure to create that way. And what I saw in terms of a relationship is, is that uh, 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 for me, Romance has to be created from the future because in the moment, uh, in the moment, it degrades to uh, uh, hallmark images. But when it's from the future, it, 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 from, when it's from the future, it, it's not something I'm creating for or to get. It's just how I how I be. So, you know, that's one of the things that open up in that area. For myself, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me not um, ignore something that you said, which was huge, and that is to look up for yourself, standing up, and being more present to you, to, to, to you. And I think that's something that we need so much more of. We, I think, I really believe that Self-love is the beginning 
of loving somebody else. Anyway. Well, well, I, I actually want to just uh, let, let, let me just clarify, okay? Because that's not what I said. <laughs> okay, I'm saying distinct from nothing to do with love. Not a, not at all. The beauty of romance, romantic in and of itself. Oh. The pure. That's what I'm like. I I, I love that. A like generated <laughs> romance. Yeah. You know, I love, mm. you know, you know how we, how we said that, how, you know, you sit up here, yeah, you would love all yourself. The other person ain't got it with, yeah. uh, they, they doing their thing, but you had a great time. You, you know, you go, man, y'all, you should have got in on all the love I had. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and for me, the, uh, that's the, when I, that's why I say it's not something I need to be doing or to work it, and that what works in, in the context of a relationship is that that is something created from a future that mm, I'm present to now. It. That I'm present to now. Yeah, and, okay. uh, yeah you know, that, that that's what, what, what has been come. That has been what has been unfolding. Watch this mm. page. Oh. Watch this page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for clearing that up for me. And I'm, and I'm glad you shared that. For myself, it has been a constant reminder, but an easier position to stay in the place of being myself and open to everyone else and everything else doing the same. And from that, I'm finding that I am finding a natural abundance of cohesion, and of love and of cooperation and of laughter in the power of just being. Mm. Wow. Mm. Not bad. Mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> oh. uh, well, uh, we, uh, let's check in and see if we have Diva Nakia available. I know she's multitasking. I am. I am. And I am available for the moment. Um, so what I've gotten so far is, and I, I heard what you all have been sharing, and it has been phenomenal. It's eye-opening and awakening for myself, and I'm sure other people can definitely relate to what has been shared thus far. Um, but over the past courses, um, what I'm seeing for myself open up is more self-acceptance and love. And I know that I accept me. I know who I belong to. I know who I belong to. Um, however, there's always space for mm. me to reflect back and consider other opportunities and possibilities. And sometimes you have to be present to your current state and really identify what is, what isn't, and what may be available, and what you not, what I don't know is available, okay? That's where you go with the, you know what you know, you know what you don't know that you know, and you don't know what you don't know that you don't know concept. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, I have been mentally positioning myself uh, for what I see in the future and living it as though it is my present condition. Mm -hmm. And it has been so amazing that mm. even in my dreams, I have overslept wow. the past two nights and mm. both days I was supposed to get my son to church on time. I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning each day <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> Taking forever to get back to sleep, wake back up at six or seven o'clock in the morning, go back to sleep. But my dream, especially last night, has been so alive, so mm. present, and I'm living it. And it's so clear to me that it it just knocked the wind out of me, but not mm. in a bad way at all. So like Nikki was sharing about more acceptance of others, 
and the differences of others and allowing people to live as who they are and be okay with that because people have to be okay. It will, I would like for people to be okay with who I am and my life and what my choices are because we are all different and we're not all looking at things the same way and not making blame or saying one person is wrong or right. It's just how we identify ourselves in a life that we're living actively. So with boldness, I'm being more present to my life and the conditions of my life, my wants, my desires, what I tolerate, what I don't tolerate, what I'm accepting of and what I don't accept, and just being, but being in a new way, in a more uplifting, positive, outgoing, and bold, and demanding of a present way. So that's what I've been getting and taking from doing the work and living the work and actively doing the work. So that is where I am. So thanks for sharing and thanks for the acknowledgement and the opportunity to share. Wow. Well, thank you for all that. And that is a lot. And that's a great space to be in. Before we continue, I just want to say that I can relate also in a different way with what Robin said, and that is in, in dating, that there is more love and more gentleness also in the letting him, them speak and listening, let, letting, you know, and listening to them <laughs> to get everything out without interruption or without, and I kind of had the same experience, of course, with my, with my brother, you know, when I was <laughs> One of my brothers to change eating habits and stuff, you know, so it kind of all comes in together. And, mm. it, and for me, it falls back under that umbrella of just being and accepting. And even how I want to be accepted. I want to be accepted as I am, not as someone else wants me to be or their expectations of me. So, whew. <laughs> There it is. Okay, so <laughs> Man, thank you, everybody. Let's now start our first inquiry <laughs> of superstition. <laughs> the killers of love, romance, and partnerships with none other than Robin. Robin, take it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to begin in a place that may seem surprising at first, and that is to look at are your favorite complaints running the show? And when I say favorite, I mean favorite, because we think that we don't like our complaints, but we're going to look into, into that some more deeply. So we're going to say that we all have what you could call unshakable complaints. So the nature of unshakable complaints is our inquiry. So what is the nature of a complaint? What's behind a complaint? What do we get from holding on to a complaint? Those are the questions. So why are some complaints unshakable and others easily resolved? Do complaints have something to do with the occurring world? Often as we do the work to have our experience of love, romance, and partnership grow, or move to the next level, we notice that we have complaints. So sometimes we acknowledge those complaints either verbally or through our actions. But other times they might get expressed through innuendo or a lack of action. So either way, these complaints can be debilitating and become barriers keeping our highest and best from being manifested. All of our complaints, especially in terms of love, romance, and partnership, are not cre created equally. We are going to examine and have an at inquiry into a specific type of complaint, the unshakable complaint. So unshakable complaints are the complaints you may or may not give voice to, but you know in your heart of hearts they exist and have existed for quite a while. 
they are complaints you verbally or not so verbally consistently wish would disappear. I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds to think a couple of a couple of your unshakable complaints. And now you're going to write the following categories down. Love is one. The second is romance. And the third is partnership. Under each category, write at least one issue you have putting up with, you excuse me, you have been putting up with, trying to change your fix, or pretending it's okay with you. If you are clear this is an issue that seems like you can never shake uh, or it's gone on for far too long, write it down. If you have given up hope, maybe prayed, and it seems like nothing is happening, write it down. If it's something small but irritating, and it just irritates the heck out of you, write it down. Please feel free to keep writing. We're going to move forward in the inquiry with a couple of questions. Do I have a complaint? Or does the complaint have me? Is the complaint truly unshakable? Or do you suspect that there is some hidden value that is having you keep the complaint around? Maybe something that you like about the complaint or something that provides something for you that maybe you don't really love that it's that way, but it really is. So let's look into the nature of an unshakable complaint. So hopefully you have at least two or three written down. So a perpetration is a wrongdoing and a, and a complaint that's unshakable is a perpetration. And here are some of the things that happen. I am right and others are wrong. When you look at that complaint, it positions you so that you're right and other people are wrong. Within that complaint, you can justify your actions and invalidate your actions or the actions of others. Excuse me, let me, I'll, let me say that one another way because I think I just said it in a confusing way. So I'm just going to say it in the first person in the first person. So I can justify my actions and invalidate your actions or the actions of others. That should be clearer. I can dominate the conversation and not have to hear the other side or avoid being dominated and, must, and avoid listening to another's point of view. So I'm set. It is this way and I'm not gonna look at any other options. When we are being right about our complaints, they are unshakable and there is no resolution. So, but the nature of an unshakable complaint is that it really, that is a, that is a, that, that complaint is like solid, like a, like an object. And it is the truth. And there really is no resolution for it. At least not that's in our power. That's how it seems. So in terms of being right, a complaint, a complaint that is unshakable creates an occurring world of victim. Poor me. I could have been somebody, but it's not my fault. So when it comes to an unshakable complaint, the complaint seems big and we seem little. We're the victims. So ultimately, it gives us a false pretense for avoiding responsibility. I can't do anything about it. I'm a helpless victim. I don't have to be responsible. That's the mischief. So avoiding the responsibility for resolving unshakable complaints does not come without a price. In this case, the price is not right. When we are pretending, and we may even be pretending to ourselves, by the way, 
when we are pretending to be the victim of unshakable complaints, we create an occurring world that has an impact on our mental, physical, and spiritual experience of our lives. The specific areas that pay that price for an unshakable complaint are our health and vitality. It is draining to do something you complain about or be with people you have complaints about. Love and joy. Yeah, I'm jumping up and down for joy while complaining about how you don't listen, never have and never will. So you can see that there's no joy while I'm complaining. Complaining and joy cannot exist at the same time. Freedom and power. Like, why should I even bother when you never appreciate what I do anyway? And it will never turn out. No power. No freedom. Costs full self-expression. Now, I really want you to hear this one. The price of your self-expression is, big, is the biggest loss. When you are living the occurring world of an unshakable complaint, you are, in essence, living a lie. Living a lie is the ultimate killer of your freedom to be. So going back to what you've written down, what do you now see is the price you are paying for holding on to your unshakable complaints? So are you, are you paying with your health and vitality? Are you paying through the loss of love and joy? Have you lost your freedom and your power? And almost inevitably, regardless of which of the others, you have lost your full self-expression because of the lie inherent in, in there being a complaint that is bigger than you are, a complaint to which you are the victim. So the biggest perpetration from holding on to an unshakable complaint is avoiding responsibility. So what actions will you choose to take that will resolve these issues, these complaints? And by when will you take those actions? I want you to write those things down now. And meanwhile, we're going to take a two-minute stretch break before we resume the conversation. We'll be sharing during the, during the break and responding to several questions that you have sent us. So the break All is right. beginning now. Okay, Diva Robin. Tough stuff, right? Diva <laughs> Robin. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> perpetrations, unsakeable complaints, avoid Yuck. responsibility. And it's so oh, real. Yeah. And it is oh, so, my so God. real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. You mean this is not fluff? I don't want to get to the hard <laughs> stuff, then. Oh, no. But we have yes. uh, Diva Robin. Uh, we have uh, a participant from Sioux City, Iowa. And mm. we have Margaret. Miss Margaret wants to know, how do I get my boyfriend to participate in the webinar? I have tried wow. and tried and tried, and, he, and uh, mm. I can't get him to tear himself away from uh, Sunday afternoon basketball uh, to participate. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, let I me look at that for a second. Okay, yeah, you well, say we'll, it, well, we'll, I'll be okay, thinking all right, well, hey, 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 y'all are partners in crime. So. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about how, what I would do. You please do, Sherry. Maybe you'll cover what I would have said anyway. <laughs> Try to put yourself it. in his shoes. Try to put yourself in his shoes. If he was a person who already loved sports, loved this is March's March Madness for basketball, for college basketball. So if this is something that he was already involved in, instead of trying to force him into your world that you're already involved in and make him stop, push, stop what he's interested in, Involve himself and engage him in a conversation of some of the topics that we're discussing. And then at, during the webinar, 
But he doesn't have to be on the weapon, but he is still, but he's still a part of the sea, which he's still a part of the weapon or in the conversation because you are engaging him and, and allowing him to engage from his comfort space, listening to him and what he has to say so that you can get also what it is that you need to, that you need to hear from him that you may not have even heard before from your already always listening, which we discussed a lot. But give him that space. If, it was respectful, if, if, if you respect him as a man and as someone that you love in that space, he may on his own come to the webinar on his own. And that's how you want him to come. You want him to kind of be a part of, of something on his own. But you are free to engage the conversation outside of the webinar. Wow, you're free to engage in the conversation outside of the webinar? <laughs> hmm. What an ocean. What a, yeah. Uh, um, uh, okay. We have yeah, a... I'd actually like to, I'd also like to say something about it. And that is um, that if you, two things. One is listen to him when he says, and really go, yeah, I mean, really understand, like, exactly like Nikki was saying, that you put yourself in his shoes and let him have his life. Now, there's a couple of other things. One is um, that men love, this is a little side tip, so if there are men living, uh, listening, um, close your ears. <laughs> uh, for you women, uh, one of the things that really drives men, and it, it's a, a kind of success for them is to make women happy. Men love to make women happy. So I don't know how you've mm -hmm. approached it, but one of the things you could say to him is simply that it would make you really happy if he did it. Um, and then in a more practical side, you could also um, go to the website and you can share, you can you could do that together and pick up a lot of the material that way. So that's what right. I have to add. Okay. okay. Well, we have time. I would grab Diva Nakia, but we actually have a question for Diva Nakia and Diva Nikki. And Diva Nakia and Diva Nikki, we have Francis out of somewhere in Ohio. Diva Nikki and Diva Nakia, what's the difference between the Divas webinar and the spiritual trainings of Creflo Dollar. Huh. Wow. Well, shucks. <laughs> oh, Diva Nakia, you <laughs> you want to go for that one? <laughs> okay. Empress, I guess. Empress of Faith. Wait, wait, wait. Let's throw that one over to the Empress of Faith mm -hmm. quick, faster than a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. Hold on. One, give me one second for that one because that one is a powerhouse. So first of all, uh, repeat that question one more time so I can make sure when I approach it, you approach it that I'm approaching you got, it correctly. You got to get the 60-second answer, but what's the difference between the Divas webinar and the spiritual teachings of Craft Flow Dollar? Okay. Well, um, you have to look at the person to some extent. Um, Creflo Dollar, I truly engage with his word, but we need, we, I, write it down for me. I truly, we're truly engaging in his word. So, you know, nothing taken away from his walk in, his ability to minister, okay? But technically, we're not here ministering to you. Um, and mm. I'm the Empress of Faith, and I love the Lord. And if you want to sit down and have an ex parte conversation about God and my walk with him and his love for us, then we can do that all day long. And what his word says compared to how we're actually living our lives, we can do that all day long. But that's not why we're here. We're here not to teach you the word. We're here to create a life. We're here to identify ways that we as human beings can receive each other and be enlightened by 
uh, being authentic and being truthful first to ourselves and loving and accepting of ourselves. So therefore, we have the ability to do that same thing with others. Um, the work that we're doing is we're charging you, we're challenging you to do the work for yourself so you can have some self-discovery. You already know where you stand with God. You already know your purpose. And if you don't, then that's something that you'll have to visit with your minister, your pastor, your your uh, your your leader, okay? But that is not our purpose. So it's twofold, but we don't shun and we don't uh, prevent the conversation. We don't stop the conversation, but we're not trying to encourage it because we consider all people and we consider all people of all walks of faith. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, it okay. does, and I think Robin has to, uh, uh, whoever's running this segment will <laughs> have to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Nikia. Steven Nikia. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Robin, you guys. I, admi- I had it, muted it, myself. It's, it's, oh, back <laughs> to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to pass the ball to Nikia now. I mean, excuse me, to Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> oh. Okay, Nikki, oh, over to you. <laughs> well, so just to piggyback our, our, what Nikia said really quickly is truth is truth regardless of where truth comes from or how it is delivered. And where we're providing, like Nikia said, is challenging challenges to help grow you and to provoke thought into growth. So there's really no difference. It's how you it's how you receive and how you perceive it. All right. Over to you, Nikki. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> in one second here. In a minute, <laughs> deep in Nikki's I'm going sorry. to uh, deep in yes. our inquiry into the incurring world create, created from superstition. This is, by the way, this is this is Robin, and this is one of my very favorite topics because um, it's so freeing once you start to see this. And by the way, the same thing is true of unshakable complaints. It looks like bad news, but once you get to the other side of that, you won't believe the freedom. Okay. Now, now, while Diva oh, Nikki is, have you got the technology back together? I do. Sorry. Thank oh. you for your patience. All right. <laughs> so the inquiry, the current world, superstitions, our conversations designed to protect us from a uh, well, A little bit. I, I, I don't think you're at the right spot, but I'm going to go ahead. Superstitions, the prosperity killers reveal. Superstitions is, they, them, people should. When wow. is a superstition not a superstition? Now, think about that question for a moment. When is a superstition not a superstition? Now, I know a few of you have been in previous workshops. So, you know, we got the, Robin, we got the smart rats and the prosperous divas <laughs> webinars. So don't shout yeah. out the ass or, or puff up your chest. <laughs> Just be quiet. But I want you to, if you are aware of the, quote, answer, I want you to uh, get present to the answer again new. Now, a superstition is not a superstition when you say it's a superstition. Otherwise, it's real. Hmm. It'll live for you as real. Diva Nikki? And that's so heavy. <laughs> In this segment, we are having an inquiry into some of the superstitions we create and keywords that alert you to potential superstitions. 
Superstitions create an occurring world in our listening. It is all about the conversation manipulating the context of our experience and we are unaware of its deadly impact. The inquiry, so the occurring world, superstitions are conversations designed to protect us from forces beyond our control. They are subject to harm us by causing us to take or not take certain actions. The superstitions have us. Superstitions are designed to prevent us from taking risks, being creative, being responsible or avoiding responsibility, having our full self-expression. Superstitions are manifestations of excuses for not taking actions. <laughs> To avoid discomfort or looking bad in the opinion of others. Superstitions are a way to hide from the real issues and real solutions. Again, avoid responsibility. There was a movie, um, Angel Heart, where a man hides from the devil by hiding himself from himself. And if you saw the movie, you know it doesn't work out well. So superstition is simply an unshakable complaint we are hiding. Ultimately, we have complaints from our view when we do not want to be responsible. We may worry about looking bad or having to deal with negative attitudes and opinions or like, or like Randy says, we're just plain scared. <laughs> and these are the complaints we don't treat as complaints because we want to keep them around. We're still getting juice out of them. So the divas have created a short list of keywords or phrases that will help you identify that sneaky little superstition. Superstition is they, them, People should, would. When we say these words in the context of our opinions about a situation or someone often, it is to put the person or situation in a box. And this box limits our understanding of them or the circumstance and allows us to play victim. Most people, people think, people won't. Most people. He is that way. She is that way. A good customer is that way. A good prospect is that way. If he really loved me, he would always, see how this goes? Write the following categories. Love, romance, partnership. And under each category, write the superstitions you have created. And next to the superstitions, Right, where do I choose to take responsibility? And what new action will I take? What difference does seeing these hidden complaints or superstitions have on these areas of my life? Please continue the exercise on superstitions. And add to your list, next to each one, create a new conversation that will have the superstition disappear and leave you empowered. 
We will continue the conversation on the other side of the break with partnership, Keys to Success, with me, Diva Nikki. The time is now 5.50. Please return at 5.56 in six minutes. With joy of heart, I awaken anew to the divine power within me. Today is Epiphany, an observance of the Magi's visit to the manager. The Magi were the first people who saw the newborn child for the pure expression of divine love. Just as the Magi sought the Christ child, I seek to know the magnificence of the divine within me. When I love and forgive others, I draw upon the unconditional love of my true nature. I give generously to those around me, and I discover the abundant substance of spirit readily available. Humble and still, I awaken anew to the divine power within me. There is no greater epiphany than to know myself as an expression of the divine. Claiming all that is revealed to me as a child of God, I am filled with joy. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Acts 2, 28. Some you have nothing. 
but you have conquered all, standing tall and strong, suffering long, but patient, simply on the top of me. And what if that is how it seems, and it's not real? 
What if you could reach your demographic group by leaps and bounds and literally spend pennies on marketing, promotions, events, social media production? What if? What if, by the way, instead of you spending money for events and promotions, you are being paid for events and promotions? So over the next few sessions, we're doing the same work as an organization that you'll be doing for yourself and your organization. And the first key is creating a hook to ride with the wealthy sponsors. Over $16 billion was spent on sponsorships by corporations and nonprofits. Why? Think about this for a moment. Why are they spending so much money on a sponsorship? They need what the partners are offering. And it's not customers or a new market. They already have the customers and market you want to reach. They need you for ideas they can't generate. They can provide to their demographic group. And they are more than willing to professionalize your existing content or organization. Now, you must intelligently Present your partnership value for their demographic group, which might only require five or six PowerPoint slides and a cover letter. And by the way, this is not a get rich quick, and uh, you might be surprised how fast the money starts rolling in from multiple businesses and nonprofits. You need your website, social media marketing, competitive and professional. How about a Fortune 500 company or a major nonprofit do that for you to enhance your appeal for their target market? Hmm. Is your listening one of, they won't, they won't do that for me. See, you have to have all your ducks in a row. What is your current role for partnerships? Rana B is going to share a little more about the Divas Partnership model. Rani? Okay, thank you, Ed. Um, you know, as we said, that our webinars are practical and pragmatic, yet uh, our conversation uh, is one that lends itself to have you think from a different perspective than you may have looked at before. Now, um, the Divas Partnership Model. Let's look at this. There are sponsors, and sponsors are businesses, and a keynote that Diva Nikki kept saying, nonprofits. And ultimately, the sponsors and the nonprofits have a goal of providing value to the customers that they have and to expanding the reach to bring in new customers for the businesses or non or the clientele they serve as a nonprofit group. You have a desire, you want to reach those same customers that they want to reach. The difference is they have them and you don't. Now, uh, the beauty if you, uh, if, if most of us know what a, uh, uh, have seen uh, railroads, train tracks, engines, and freight and stuff being hauled across the country. Well, when we go to open up a new business or, or we say, hey, look, I really had this idea. I want to go ahead and get it marketing, whether it's selling cookies, uh, art, or, or I got a, a book or a cause or the Prosperous Divas, whatever you're doing. The first thing we do is we figure out how to make it hard on ourselves because we look at the long list of things we need to have so we can even try to, to make some money doing it. How am I going to – I have 10 people on my email list. It's going to take me 10 years uh, to get 1,000 uh, people that I can then try to uh, market to and all of that. Okay? What if you didn't need that? What if the the ten hundred maybe you got a thousand ten thousand you have that was all enough you didn't need to add another one 
to your email list because the sponsor that you're partnering partnership to provide new value to their customers that they already have, they have tens of millions. Now, it, you could be one of those people who could be the, the next tech social media gazillionaire. And if you are, you're probably going to do some of this because it's going to be faster. So instead of looking at it from all that you have to create, maybe you've created enough, and what you have to do is frame it in a way that Sponsors see the value for their customers. Now, why should they do this for you? Why, 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 why should they do this for you? Because it's you and your content. With all the money they have, with the big professional uh, media marketing staffs who will make sure that uh, all the right stuff is done, they can't come up with all the content. They just cannot do it. They're always, always searching. And when I say content, that might be your book. You may have a book about the empowerment of women in 2017, given the ramifications of the, of the political environment. There are companies, nonprofits that will say, you know what, uh, 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 we empower women. And that would be a value to them. So we're going to sponsor your book tour. And no, you're not going to have to worry about paying paying for that uh, uh, for uh, one of those uh, RVs because we're going to get you an RV with a driver to take you place to place. And you think I'm kidding? You you do. Now uh, the Divas Partnership model uh, just uh, uh, we get trained, we get trained, and we get permission from uh, our sources and places we go to get trained to share because they are like us. We share so that you'll participate with us. So uh, this is uh, not something that we we newly created ourselves, uh, but it was borrowed, we acknowledge, and adapted for uh, the prosperous divas. So that's just a little bit of the insight I wanted to give you. Back over to Diva Nikki. Thank you, Ronnie B. And what an excellent job you did of detailing that. So over the next week, we want you to take the first steps in creating your hook to wealthy living. Find three businesses or nonprofits whose demographic market is the same as yours. And a good way to determine that is to look at the mission of the organization. If it aligns with your goals and mission, you are on the right track. Example, your mission concerns empowering women. So find the organization whose mission is to do the same, empower women. Write three ways this look, write this is ways what you're creating will make a difference for the women, the organizations they're targeting. And remember, you're not building the superhighway, you are creating a hook to ride the superhighway of wealthy living. In our final segment, we are joined by Nakia for the Divine Mind Prosperity Bastard. So we're taking a five minute break. The time is now 6.09, which means we should be back here around 6.14. We'll see you after the break. We'll be with Nakia. Live your value. Do all you can to be capable and competent, decisive, effective, successful. But don't let your whole identity get wrapped up in those things. You are more than your capabilities, more than your achievements. Those things are great and important, yet they are things you do, not who you are. No loss, no failure, no reversal of fortune can diminish the true and unique value of you. You can do impressive things as well as humiliating things and still your beautiful essence remains. 
achievements, large and small, are concrete expressions of the value that is your life. Yet that value is always there, with and without the achievement. From deep inside, you feel driven to share the value of your life and to build upon it. You do so with your efforts, your words, your presence. And no matter what you do or fail to do or how you appear in the eyes of others, the value is ever there. Know this always and feel the confidence to live your value with authenticity, kindness, love, and joy. Ninja, (laughs) 
We have a great Divine Mind Prosperity Blaster for you this week. Whew. Kingdom. Mm. I hold the keys to my own prosperity. An abundant life is my spiritual birthright. Yet, when I view life only through my physical senses, I see only a world in finite resources and limited possibilities. In contrast, when I place my faith in the invisible, infinite spirit, I recognize that with God, all things truly are possible. Steep in a heavenly consciousness, I unlocked an inexhaustible storehouse of good. Whether it is financial prosperity, loving relationships, or physical, emotional, mental well-being, I give thanks for the realization that as a child of God, I have always held the keys to my divine inheritance. With a faithful and grateful heart, I claim my entitlement to unlimited peace and prosperity. Whew. Wow. Okay. Now, y'all know I shared with you all earlier about how I'm seeing myself in my future in the present. So these are the same insights that I currently see for myself. And just as I just shared with you, I claim my entitlement to unlimited peace and prosperity mm. because there is no feeling. See, when you begin to live and act as you are, as though it is, okay, you can live with an unlimited in the mindset of saying, there is no, no limitations for me. I have too many options, and there are options that I don't know that I have. There's options that I don't know that I don't know that I have. But if I keep my eyes open and if I keep my ears open and if I keep myself present to the opportunities and possibilities that are brought forth towards me, then I can more willingly be open to the concept of something different that I had not previously considered because I didn't know to consider it. So just even it with me saying that, you have to have an open mindset to just be present to what I just exposed you to and receive it and then go forward and take the chance, take the risk. Nothing dangerous, but possibilities. So the sixth guiding uh, question. Well, uh, uh, Diva Nikki, uh, Diva Nikki I, I just want to add on one thing. And mm-hmm. Diva, Diva Nikki, Nikki said the last part was really lovingly, but uh, I got some bad news for you. It is very dangerous to be yourself because you, you don't know what that looks like. You've been being mm-hmm. these other people for so long trying to fit in and, uh, and, and with all those perpetrations that, 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 that uh, it's a threat to the to everything that's not the true you oh, it is a that. threat you are the, it is when you're being yourself when you are being faith in action keyword action because without any action there is no faith it's just talking about that you have faith <laughs> you know <laughs> when you start putting putting your butt on the line <laughs> things start getting dangerous people start looking at you like uh, I don't know what's going on because you used to go along to get along huh. and now mm-hmm. you being you and that might that might rock the boat so you know mm-hmm. uh, now uh, uh, you know you are protected <laughs> okay even the key back to you all right no problem thank you The six guiding questions for being a divine mind prosperity blaster. Productivity, psychology, persuasion, 
sociology, presence, and purpose. So today we are focusing on the second area for high performance psychology. Am I living my truth? Consider this question from the context of being a divine mind prosperity blaster. Remember, this is a game you are creating with yourself. By playing the game, you create you by playing the game you created, you will be a divine mind prosperity blaster. Okay? You're creating a game. So last week we focused on being productive as an access to being a divine mind prosperity blaster and the action to take was creating a daily mission. Example, my mission for today is to have at least four of my coworkers or clients say, I am surprised how easy you made this for me. If you did the assignment and you are closer to being a divine mind prosperity blaster or your performance improved, congratulate yourself. If you didn't do the assignment, please jump in the waters. It's fine. Please send me a shout out and share your results. This week, we are looking at psychology and as an access to being a divine mind prosperity blaster? Am I living my truth? Hmm. What three words really define who I am as a person? Hmm. Guess what? You get to say who you are as a person. You get to define who you are as a person, not the world. What three words will define how I choose to interact with others? This is about you, what you want. You're creating your life. It's a restart. Before you start communicating with people, there is an opportunity to take charge of how the conversations will go as a matter of your words in the matter. No matter what you are doing, or where you're going, your actions will be consistent with living your truth. The key is having the natural expression of your truth manifested with each interaction. It is undeniable that you are a person of service, generosity, and power, owning that truth and your natural expression of the truth gives you the freedom to make a positive different. Time for the assignment. Pins and paper ready. Each day before I begin my conversations with people, I will say the three words that define who I am out loud. Number two. Hey, hey, uh, Diva Nakia, what are the three words? Mine is bold. Mine is beautiful, and mine is peace. Bold, beautiful, peaceful. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, hey. Mm-hmm. What's your mm-hmm. number again? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Y'all better get that bold, beautiful, and peace. Now, you may have something different, but <laughs> that is who I have created me to be because for so long, I was not bold. I did not consider myself beautiful, and I did not have peace. But now I've chosen to be bold, to be beautiful as God created me to be, and to be at peace in every aspect of my life. Not saying there's no chaos here or there but it's what I choose to allow, okay? So number two, each day before I begin my conversation with people, I will say the three words, define how I choose to interact with others. So the three words that I choose to define how I interact with others is positive, being present, 
and being open. Positive, Positive present, and open. Present, and open. Correct. Positive, without looking at any negativity, taking out, off my sh- yellow sunglasses. Open to ideas that are fed to me. I forgot my other one. Positive. <laughs> open and what did I say? Interested, <laughs> present. <laughs> and present. Yeah. See, look, I forgot. I mean, I wasn't present to what I was saying. <laughs> hey, hey, that partnership. Part. This is partnership. That's right. It yeah, your partner, your partners, are, <laughs> right, right, Diva Nikki. Your partners are always available to you. That's right. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're open to receive. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Waiting on you to show up. Absolutely. At the no number three, at the end of my day, I will record if I succeeded or failed. Number four, I will write down what worked in having me succeed, and what I saw didn't work if I failed. Big if. Number five, I will congratulate myself for playing the game. Number six. I will be prepared to share the results I created with the Prosperous Diva, Facebook, or with good and supportive people. Whoa! I'm so excited for each of you, as I'm excited for all of us. And I definitely want you to share your progress. Let us know. Ask us questions for any clarity or misunderstandings that you may get. However, we're excited for you. And we're present to your prosperity. So come back next week for our next session, which will be Sunday, April 2nd. Check out our website for registration and details or check us out on Facebook. Visit me, of course, Empress of Faith, a.k.a. the Ninja, <laughs> Nakia, and at the appointed time, uh, well, at excuse me, appointedtimeforyou.com, and join in on the movement. For more information about workshops and seminars, visit us at prosperousivas.com. And, of course, I would like to share with you our beautiful presenters. Tonight's Prosperous Divas are myself, Nakia Franklin, appointedtimeforyou.com, Empress of, uh, Empress of Faith, I'm sorry, and Nikki Taplin, Biz Solutions, dot com Ms. Robin Jameson Robin at Robin Jameson dot com please enjoy the poetry from Baritone and never forget prosperous divas prosperity is a mindset that can be created by anyone peace love and blessings till next time the woman I am. I am a woman of class. I am a woman of sophistication. I am a woman of distinction. There is not another woman on earth like me. You can clearly distinguish me from a crowd. You'll never get me confused with another. I am a woman who respects herself to the fullest. Therefore, I demand respect and make sure that I carry myself in such a way that you have no choice but to give it to me. I am an educated woman, dangerously intellectual, armed with knowledge, and I use my weapons frequently. I am a woman of value. I'm worth more than gold, more than any amount of money you could imagine. I am priceless. I am a woman of substance, full of meaning and good quality. I am a woman of confidence. And please, don't get my confidence confused with conceit. I believe in myself because I have to believe in me if I want anyone else to. I am a woman who is deeply rooted into my beliefs, and I'm not willing to allow anyone to uproot me because I know to be true. I am a hardworking woman. Give me a task, and I'll move mountains to make sure that it's completed. I am a woman who loves with all of my heart. I love my family and friends unconditionally. And on occasion, even strangers, I love so hard it hurts. I 
am a woman of compassion. I'll give you my all if you needed it. I'll give you the shoes off my feet if you didn't have your own. I'll give you my shoulder to cry on if you wanted it. And turn around and give you the other one if you needed that one too. I am a woman of loyalty. I am loyal to the ones that I love and willing to do any and everything for them. I am a woman who loves and believes in God with all of who I am. And I'm not afraid to let any and everyone know. Therefore, I follow behind him blindly, knowing that he will lead me in the direction that I'm supposed to be going. I am a woman of creativity, gifted by God with specific talents and gifts given to me to show the world. I am a woman of passion. I'm passionate about pursuing my God-given purposes and making sure that they're completed far beyond capacity. I am a woman who's blessed, blessed to be surrounded by family and friends who are willing to do everything for me that I do for them, and blessed to have the love and protection of God surrounding me, and that makes me a woman who's thankful, and this is the woman I am. am.